Hey everyone, this is Susan from Sumo Design Workshop. I just wanted to do a quick tutorial on how to make simple animations in Adobe Photoshop. This is just for making very, very simple animations. If you want to do anything more complex, you'll probably want to do it in Adobe After Effects, which is a lot more of a complicated program. Um, but we will get into using a little bit of the timeline, which is transferable to other Adobe products, such as Adobe Photo, um, Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects. So first thing I'm going to do is go up to the window. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to open up the timeline. So here uh, it opens up and I have a button that I can press called Create Timeline. I've also already created a black dot on, um, on my background canvas so I have something ready to animate. At this point I want to go over and you see the little triangle here on the side? I'll just toggle that open and you can see that I've got position, opacity, and style. So all of this is our timeline that our animation will actually work on. And so if I want to do something, like say I want this ball to move over here, right? So it goes from here and here. I'll want to go over and click the little stopwatch that's at the end of the position line here, and I get what's called a keyframe. So all of these little yellow things that are then on our timeline are different positions that I can put the keyframe on. So you see that now I've got a half filled in keyframe, and as I um, scrub the timeline from here to here, I now have my ball that's going from here to there. So, and if I press my space key, it will then activate the entire timeline. Say I want it then to bounce back into somewhere else, I will just need to go past that keyframe and into another place where I want it to end up. Say I want it to go off the page. And voila, we now have a bouncing ball. The closer and further away that the keyframes are situated to one another, will either speed up or slow down their proximity and how fast they go. So if I have this really close, it's going to speed it up. You can tell the active keyframe because it's the one that's yellow. If I don't like anything that I've done with this and I want to start over because I've done a bunch of different things and I'm not happy with the way it's gone. I just go back over and click the stopwatch again and it will reset all the keyframes. You want to be very careful not to do that if you haven't saved a copy of this and you've spent a lot of time putting your keyframes in certain places. So again, how we do that is we have the original here, click on the stopwatch, set where you want your next keyframe to be, go ahead and move your object, go ahead and move again, and then voila, you have a simple animation. Say you want the opacity to change as it's bouncing, or say, well, first thing, if I wanted to move this off, if I I'm here on that keyframe, I can go ahead and move it all the way off. So anytime I want to adjust an existing keyframe, make sure it's selected. And there we go. So what if I want something to change with our little bouncing ball? as it's going through its different stages. I'm gonna make them bounce off the top again. Right there. See, so at this point, I want the opacity to change. I'll go ahead and go down here, click the opacity 
stopwatch. And then go on the timeline and see over here where it says opacity, right on top of the layers. That's when I will go and decrease the opacity and then it cre decrease it again. You have to be careful to make sure that you're using the opacity and not the fill for this. So the last one that we can go through to make it even a little bit more interesting with just the opacity and the bouncing around and the phase that can happen is to work with the style. So layer styles, you can either bring them up by clicking on the FX thing down here at the uh, bottom of the layer panel and I'll tell you all of the different ones. Or you can go ahead and just double click your layer and it will bring up the entire menu box this way. So here I am at the beginning of my timeline and I want to actually want to make it beleveled and embossed make it contoured. Let's give it a texture. So right now, I want to make sure that this is activated so I can switch that style around as it goes through my timeline. So I'll go ahead and press the stopwatch. You can see the same way it was on the other two lines. I now have a starting keyframe. My starting keyframe, if I want this to fade out, Say I want my texture to fall apart right here when it bounces off the edge here. I will then go back into my FX here and take off my level and emboss, take off my contour, take off my texture, and say OK. And you can see now there's a keyframe there. As it goes through, it will then take those off. Say if I want to do something else, one of the different, another effect that's available to me, maybe I want to give it an inner shadow. Let's see how that'll look. Eh, I don't really like that. Let's give it a co color overlay as it goes out. Here we go. Let's see how this works. I've got a texture that then falls apart at the top and turns color. As you can see, this timeline is a little bit long. The way I trim it is the way I would in most video programs. I would come up to the end of the timeline and set the end of my work area in a little bit further. I also want to set my layer in further there. So now when I press space, to run through my timeline, you can see it will activate the full timeline. Not sure, looks like I lost my texture here, so if something isn't working the way I think it should. Remember, I can go and access my keyframe by double clicking it, and it's the yellow keyframe. Double click on this, and actually, everything looks good. It might just be that my computer doesn't have enough memory to process it all at once. So let's try it again. And there we go. So we now have a nifty little animation that was just made very easily in Adobe Photoshop. So now what do I do with this? Probably asking, how do I get this out of my computer? From here, I want to go up to File. You see in my File menu, I have Export. Export under this menu, we have render to video. So I'll go ahead and press render to video. And from here, I can export it as a MPEG-4, which is a pretty standard format for video. And I'm gonna have it go to my grad school e-learning subfolder. And let's do this as test one.
So I've gone ahead and found my video that I've exported. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and press play. And you can see it's the simple animation that we made in Photoshop, which is now in an MP4 format, ready to import into any other type of video editing program that you may want to use. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you very much. And um, please follow Sumo D Learning if you want to see more tutorials like this.